Yeah, I was I, um, I was reading something about that. Uh, I, there was a video just a few days earlier how the NYPD basically initiated a firing squad on a 13-year-old. And they did that because when you do something in the masses, it fires this sense of brotherhood and like less responsibility on you because like he was about to die anyways. And like, I, I totally see how that, how that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know that. Wait, wait, explain the situation. So, um, obviously like, you know, through these past days, so many videos of like the, the police brutality and the protest is just being aired. Cause like everybody has a cell phone now, uh, compared to like the old riots and protests. And, uh, there was a video shown that the NYPD basically, they ganged up on a 13 year old who was still outside past curfew. And then they just all shot at him once. I think it was like 19 bullets that was like counted in the video. And like a, a somebody further elaborates why they did this. Cause mentally you, you, they, the trauma is just, or the, the regret. I killed a 13 year old in cold blood. It's just dramatically reduced when you're doing it with your fellow officers. Wow! Oh, they actually, I thought I thought it was like rubber rubber bullets or something. No, no it, was, it was like real bullets. I, I do not yeah. know why. And uh, I feel like we shouldn't underestimate how how bad rubber bullets are to begin with, because um, I, the the proper way of using rubber bullets in protest is the police are supposed to shoot them off the ground and it's supposed to like ricochet onto protesters because yeah. I've seen so many videos of people like losing eyes, uh, being shot in the head and then uh, are, are paralyzed basically, or just a bunch of like weird augmentations to their bodies. Because um, I mean, I don't, I don't think they're handling this right at all. Wait, 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 I'm curious to think uh, what you would think about this from, you know, an international perspective, I'm on. Yeah, how does it how does it look from your from where you are? <laughs> just like kind of like, I guess you are a little bit more removed geographically. But oh, you're still an American, so yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm curious yeah. as to what. Um, it it really hits close to home. Uh, because my sister, she's currently she currently lives in Minnesota. She's like five. She's like six. She's six years older than me, and she's like you're going to come here for college and after that and like just you know I'm protesting for you somebody might pull you over one day and like this is why we're protesting this is why some of my friends are getting hurt and it's like it, 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 it I really have to take it close not just like wow America the world leader crumbling it's like I might have to raise a family there someday and this this is of real importance yeah oh, so the the protests are still able to you know send send uh yeah and a, like a realistic message to other countries because i i've seen um like new zealand and england and some other countries where protests are happening and they're protesting for a country that isn't theirs for people who are like a very small minority in their own country yeah I think America is just like stepping down the pedestal it had as like this great country where everyone's rights are respected and all the world's countries they're looking at supposedly the leader, the leading country of the free world doing this to its own citizens, what they were doing for Lucia. And like this does spark outrage and obviously protesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, Amar, were you, um, were you surprised when everything started happening with the protests and riots? Or were you like, oh, okay, this makes sense? <laughs> I would only say that if this was in Ethiopia, where, like rioting is second nature, but not, not for America. Like, there's a place where there, there is a system where you could hold police accountable, not, albeit not that effective, but like there's something you would just expect from like, a country with an African dictatorship or like something like that, you know, it's, it's America is just belittling itself. I mean, it just shows how even in Ethiopia or especially in America, how, 
how freedom is somewhat of an illusion because, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, I mean, you can speak about this about Ethiopia, but the, the government is constantly putting limits on how its citizens can interact with each other, with others, and especially with, with the government. Because um, when I went in the summer, uh, I think it was like exam week or something, and mm-hmm. they just shut off the Wi-Fi for the entire country. <laughs> yeah, they, which they was do that. Ridiculous. That is crazy. Yeah, they did that um, a month ago or something. I think right before school went out some online activist was like sparking outrage like you have to right you have to protest dr avi's government and like they shut the all not just internet like all communication because people started texting and calling each other about it and like i i couldn't go home my dad was late to pick me up from school and i had to like get a taxi get out get a taxi myself because i couldn't call him because like all the networks were down and like it affects everyone, you know? You know what's really interesting about that is, like, even though there are riots and protests in America, the the, the weird thing is that in some places, the outpouring of those feelings and, you know, movements and emotions, they, they would just all be suppressed, you know? Um, I mean, like, in China, you know, a lot of, like, censorship and a lot of people might not even know about would be well if there was like protests there and they'd probably shut that down right away and um i mean in in, in ethiopia if you're you know protesting against the government probably shut that down too pretty quickly um so i mean i guess there is kind of an optimistic way to look at this um but it's interesting i remember i remember when i was in ethiopia kind of similar to when uh Iwa was there this in the summer um I think that was when the coup d'etat was at work trying to happen. Um, and I think they, I guess, cut off the power a little bit or they gave people a little bit here and there parts of the day. Um, yeah. I don't know if you remember, you remember that. Yeah, we heard about it like two days later. That's how severe like the shutoff of communication was 